the Lord is good. Good morning, everyone. Um, happy Independence celebration to everyone in Kenya. We will truly experience the freedom of God in, in these nations. And welcome every one of you to New Months. This is the first, uh, the first day of the first last month of half of this year. The Lord will cause His glory to be seen upon you. Amen. This month shall mark the beginning mm -hmm. and the middle of great things that God intends to do in our lives. Amen. You will find your bearing Amen. in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is also as a ministry. It is our amount of answered prayer. Answered prayer is my kingdom identity. From now, before you call, God will answer. Every question of your life that has been begging for an answer, you will find it this month. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All the prayer you have been praying, and it looks like they are hanging. Yes, this month shall be a month of reigning, of an answer to the issue of your life and my life. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, happy new month to everyone. It will bring joy and fulfillment to your life. Amen. Jesus' precious name. And as we look at that, uh, as we celebrate and take note of that, it is a double blessing for us in Kenya. Happy Independence Day. Happy New Month. So it's a double blessing. For every shame of our life, God will begin to respond with double blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to start a series of teaching today. Rejoicing in the news of life. Rejoicing in the news of life. No, N O. News of life. There are news of life. There are things that say news to you. There are circumstances that say no to you. There are people that say no to you. There are expectations that say no to you. <laughs> Most cases, we respond or sorry, we react to our no with a negative attitude. And they say, too wrong doesn't make right. That's why I want to share along this line to help each one of us to live a fulfilled life. Every no is waiting for your response and not your reactions. The best way to approach the no's of life is not to react is to respond. I want to read uh, a very beautiful passage this morning so that we can draw lesson of life from it. There are things you are reacting, uh, you are reacting against. And that thing is just telling you no. But you see, the best way to handle no's of life is to respond. Is to respond. And that is why God allowed the no to be there in the first place. You know, he does everything with purpose. 
in Judges chapter 11. There was a young, uh, there was a man here called Jephthah, the Gileadite. He said, now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor. And he was the son of an harlot. And Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bore him sons, and his wife's son grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah, and said unto him, Thou shalt not, in, thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a, a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren. There were evidence that he was one of them. And dwelt in the land of Tom, and there were gathered vain men to Jephthah. And he went and went out with him. And verse 4 says, And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. I will stop there because that will cover the portion we want to look at today. It is only God who said he will in no wise cast away. In other words, it is only God who said he will never say no to you. I want this to sink into you. So that you can have the best of your life, no matter the challenges confronting you. It is only God who says he will never forsake you nor leave you. It is only God who said, no man will come to me, I will no wise cast away. Stop living a, pre, a prestigious life where you think you cannot get no. Because that is what makes you a victim already. In John chapter 6, verse 37, it says, All that the Father given me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise Cast away. I will in no way. I am sufficiently enough that I will not turn him back. Only God has that capacity. Only God is unlimited. Only Him. Therefore, Provide a room in life as long as you are dealing with men, you are dealing with situation, you are dealing with challenges. Prepare a room for news because they are blessing in disguise. They are blessing. Nose of life are blessing in disguise. So was the case of Jephthah. I want to start by saying, or I want, I want to take us further by saying, the people who say no to you, they have their reasons. As much as it may not be tenable to you, but they have their reasons. And they are entitled to it. You know, sometimes we wonder, why are they saying no? But they have a reason for saying no. It is only God who have no reason to forsake you because you are his project or not. It's only God, your maker, my maker, the one that shed his blood for you and I. What a joy this morning. 
to know that he is our true source and our true source has no limitation. That will help you to handle and rejoice at the nose of life because they are there. Life is not 100% yes, 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 yes. In fact, I come to realize as I was meditating on this subject yesterday that the nose of life are the best thing for us. The nose of life. They are the best thing for us. Honestly, the know of life are the best thing. Because all that God has for you and I, He packaged it in us. He packaged it in us. Above all, He decided to live in us. Greater is He that is in you than the know that is coming from outside. That, 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 that is how I understand. The understanding I received. We should rejoice at the nose of life. You need it to balance. Do you know too many years bury your potential? When your yes, 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 when there are too many in the journey of life, you never fulfill your potential. No, people say no to you. People say no to you. Things say no to you. Even when you are qualified like that of Jeff Taft. It doesn't matter. If the man is the one that share you, then you are entitled to inheritance. But they gather together and say, you will not have inheritance. We say no to you as far as inheritance is concerned. But did you see what there are no both for Jeff Taft? They were saying no to him in his father's house. In his father's house. But at the end of the day, the no walk out signs and wonder that Jephthah did not only have his father's house, he had the entire city. It is from glory to glory. Because the no of men will always make you to seek the face of God. That's why he says, as we behold him, as in a mirror, we are transformed from glory to glory. When men say no, they force you to look up unto God. And the Bible said they look unto him and they were lighted. The, response, the yes response of men are good. But in a situation, and for their own reason, when they say no to you, look unto God. It will compel you to lift up your eyes unto that hill, from whence cometh the true hand of a man. The nose of life. Rejoicing in the nose of life. Every opportunity that people say no to you. Circumstances say no to you. No, you can't have it. And in your own judgment, you believe that it's within their ability to say yes. My friend, don't bury your head. Don't squander your vision. Don't destroy your dream. All they are saying is that we afford you the opportunity to look at the true source of hell. That's what they are saying. That's what they are saying. But in most cases, we handle the nose of life in a wrong way. We bury our head. We drop our ball. We kill our dream. You know what the Bible says? You say all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his purpose. You are God's purpose on earth. Let no, let no, at no time, the nose of life bury your head. At no time. At no time. There is a blessing when, when, life tells you or people tells you no no 
Because by your creation, by your formation, all things, not some things, all things, and you know, all embraces or comprises of good and bad. And we know that all things work together, all things. Not only yes, 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 work for your good. Even the no, sometimes God allow it for you to see greater glory. Let me begin to say some things to you here. Do you know when men say to you or circumstances say to you, no, is that God allowed it so that you can find yes within you. Your no, no from people, no from men, no from circumstances, no from challenges of life, we always make you or program you to find yes within you. And you know, when you find yes within you, you become a supplier of yes. I tell you, when you find yes within you, you will not only have it for that hour, you will also be able to supply order that are in lack of yes. And that's what makes you a darling of your generation. That's why you find that most great people are people that people say to them, no. Most great people in life are people that life say to them, no. But they rejoice at it. And eventually, they, they find yes within them. There is a yes enough within you. There is a yes enough within you. And you need to find this yes. When you find it within you, you can use it as many times as you desire. Let me tell you, anything that comes to, to stress you is because God wants to spread you. I'm telling you the truth. Ah, in my village, they have a saying, Adani Luru Agbara Lofi Kodi. You know what it means? Somebody that disappointed you has only strengthened your inner man. Because every disappointment of man lie you up for divine appointment from God. Every disappointment from man, from situation, from challenges of life, only rearrange your position and line you up for the help of God. And you know, the Bible says, God is the present help in time of trouble. Stop burying your head when people say no to you. If you go to them with laughter and they say no, be able to live there maintaining your laughter and say thank you. Let me say this to you, I have come to realize in my own little way, and I'm sure quite many of you, if you reflect back, people that you are a product, the major event of your life are the nose of men. The things you count on today and claim you have life, they are the nose. There are things that occur or emanate or were provoked by the nose of men. I'm telling you the truth. I know it because both of us, you and I, have been mightily help of God in the midst of nose of men, in the midst of nose of challenges. I want you to begin to rejoice at the nose of life. They are there, depending on how precious your destiny is. I saw, in a little way, to some extent, very positive, when Sarah and Abraham said no to Hagar, to Hagar. Carry that child, cast him out, and they casted him out. It was on that mission that Haggai had the voice of God with clarity, what will become of Ishmael. God said, we make him great. 
Haggai will say, well, since we have been casted out, this child is going to die. But in the midst of the no, experience of no, he had the voice of God. I want you to begin to rejoice in the midst of your nose. In the midst of it. Be man enough, be woman enough, be Christian enough not to pick offense from the nose of people. They are limited. They have their reason. Respect their reason. But as you respect their reason, don't bury your thoughts. Because they are saying no to you is an opportunity for you to look inward for your years. Look at what happened to Jephthah. In a few verses from where I stop, the same man they said no to now had the privilege to negotiate their submission, the submission of the whole city for him. They say he will not have inheritance from his father's house, but now he's about to inherit the whole city. The nose of life is a persuasion for you to drop your life, to drop your dream. It's not actually that you cannot succeed. It's just, it's, you know, it's just like uh, a test of your tenacity, of your endurance, of, your, of how much you know. It is never a confirmation of your incompetence or of your lack of capacity. But in most cases, it is just out to stretch you so that it can spread you. God allowed the no to stress you so that he can spread you. We'll be looking at several examples in the Bible of men who started life with no's of life. No's of life. And at the end of the day, they became successful. Because they know we make you to look inward. They know we make you to reevaluate your position. They know we make you to sit down and think. And thinkers are tower builders. Those who think. The nose of life, most of the time, drag, I mean, we drag you to the table of reasoning. And you know, God said, come and let us reason together. I pray for you and I today that we will no longer pick offenses from the news of life. Rather, we will rejoice. And in our joy, revelation will burst out. I have come to that point in my life over and over. You know, when you have the news of life, you become a man with a ready answer for, of yes tomorrow. Men of no today are men that will have a ready answer of yes for their tomorrow. You don't need to carry books. You had, you had, a, you had a, the disciples, the thing that we have seen, the thing that we have heard, the thing that we have touched. Nose of life, we eventually make you to touch yes. Yes, it becomes your possession. I, I, I want to say to you, there are people today, when I meet them on the road and I'm greeting them, they don't know why I'm greeting them. I'm thanking them and celebrating them because of the no they say to me some years back. They set me thinking. Our brain could go to dormancy. No of men are the electric cooker that warm up the brain. When people say no to you, it's like they just own a, 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 a cooker when there, is a, uh, when there is a food that has been frozen and they want to defrost it. The nose of men come to defrost your brain and then open your eyes to see other options that are available. And in most cases, those options are bigger than what is saying no to you. For example, what can be more readily available than what you know from your within, which is a product of no that some people say to you some yes ma'am. I love reading this passage. I love it because it depicts some, some experience I've had in life. I was born to an average little okay family. When my father passed on, I'm the last born. I, 
and I was very close to him, but I was given nothing. So I understood the, the predicament of this man. I, I was given nothing, nothing to say of any value, of any economy value. So the nose of my brother is a product of today, is what is behind the product of today you are saying. The nose of my brothers. I was given nothing. I was in Africa, in West Africa, you know, cow, coffee, cocoa farm, you know, cartoons. I was given none. None. Zero. I was given none. But I remember my father used to tell me, inheritance is good, but if you depend on it, you have subscribed for suffering. I will never forget. He who rely on inheritance is good. The Bible recommends it. He said, wisdom without inheritance is not good. That's what the Bible says. But at the same time, my father made me to realize, even though he was not born again, that look, I am not the only source you have. I am your father. He did put it in context of scripture, but today, with the knowledge I have, I can recapitulate what my father was simply saying, that look, I am your father, but there is another father in heaven. I am the one who brought you here. There is somebody who has an eternal purpose for bringing you here. So don't rely on my wealth. If it's not available, look up to God. And today, I am grateful to God that I was not given an inheritance. I am grateful. Most snow of life will lead you to celebrate those who offer you those snow if you take it positively. If you take it, if you will take it positively. I'm telling you, you will celebrate those who look at you and say no to your face when it was within their power. All they did was to provoke you to go back to the drawing board of life. And from there, look at the big thing God will show you. I commend you to God today and to the word of his grace. That your eyes of understanding will be open. You will not just live a life whereby you are, you are rebellious to, to normal principle of life. That you will not just give yourself to bitterness and hatred for no good reason. Respect other people's opinion for saying no to you. Remember, they are not your maker. But your maker said he will never leave you. He will never have occasion or reason to cast you away. And how did he describe himself? He said, I am God of all flesh. There is nothing too hard for me to do. What is hard for those men when they say no? It's possible with me. That's why I say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I want to tell you on this first day of the month that a time is coming in your life you are going to celebrate before those who say no to you. God will give you a celebration of a higher dimension. You know, I, I came to realize there's something about success. Success is not sweet. It's not sweet except to have opportunity to meet people who said no to you. So what makes success sweet is that you had opportunity to meet people who said no to you at various stages of life. People look at you and say, no, this one cannot amount to anything. When you meet them, oh my God, it is a music that requires no volume for you to dance. I tell you the truth. You remember Joseph? He looked at his brother. He said, am I now God? Am I now God? Am I, now, am I now becoming God unto you? And then he made it very clear in 50-20, Genesis 50-20. He said, you meant it for evil, but the law turned it for good. The law turned it for good. He said, but as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass, at least this day, to save much people alive. 
much people. The brothers of Joseph never see a wolf in him, but a nation eventually saw the wolf of Joseph. It is not how people look at you. It is what you make out of their look that matters to your life. People will always have their opinion. The brother of Joseph had their strong reason. He was the last born. Or second to the last born. He was, the, he was younger than his, elder, his, his brothers. Only Benjamin, I think, was next to Joseph. So how can you say this is your dream? Your dream is like he's going to save us. And they were mad at him. They have their traditional and social reason. But I think Joseph took it positively. When they say, no, you are not going to stay in our father's house. We rather sell you out. They sold him out to a stranger. It's a, it's a way of saying no to him. No to Joseph's life in his father's house. No to Joseph's love from his father. But Joseph took it positively. I don't know what you are going through this morning. But I have this word for you. Learn to rejoice in the news of life. Learn to rejoice in the news of life. If you can keep your joy, you will soon attract divine presence. And when God show up, he will give you everything. He will give you everything. Stop putting up an attitude that therefore put God away. Begin to put an attitude that attract God, who say he will never cast you out. May the Lord bless you this morning. May you have a beautiful holiday as you meditate upon this war. I tell you the truth and I lie not. Most people who have said no to me, no by, they have their reasons. When I meet them today, I am full of joy. When people have opportunity to help you and they deny you, that does not make them a helper. They are not the helper of your life. Maybe you thought within you that they could be a channel to help you. For, don't forget, there is a difference between a channel and a source. God is the source of our help. Human beings are the channels. And therefore, if the channel say no, you don't get angry with the channel. Because the, the source can choose to use another channel. Praise the Lord. Now, but when you put up all manner of attitude and character and discouragement, you become blind to the next available channel that is willing to be of help to convey God's blessing to your life. It is well with you. Maintain your joy today. Look positive towards this month. It is your month of answer prayer. I see rain of answer at your dwelling throughout this month. Before you call, God will answer. It is well with our soul. As you go today, may the Lord go with you. May the Lord be with you. May he satisfy your heart with deep understanding so that you stop wailing in tears and stigmatization of your own life like you are a victim. You are not. The blood of Jesus, the day he washed you, he made you nothing less than a victor in all ramification of life. God bless you and prosper you. If you have been there for some few minutes together with me right now. You are not born again. And you have come in contact with this clip. The fact that so many things are saying no, 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 no to you does not mean there is no solution. Solution is with Jesus. Jesus is the end to all crises of life. When he come into your boat, I tell you the wave of life will stop rocking the boat. I want you to receive Jesus this morning. And I'm glad if you are willing, I will pray a simple prayer with you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I am a sinner, but today I come unto you. Jesus, save me. I am a sinner. Cleanse me. Wash me with your precious blood. For I believe in my heart, and I confess this hour, that you are the Son of the living God, that you died and you rose from the grave for my sake. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters, wherever you may have prayed this prayer. Distance is not a barrier. And what an opportunity. The banner display on your screen, that is our contact as a ministry. And the next one at the city, different city where our ministry has a practical representation. Feel free to fellowship with us. And in case we are not close to where you are, maybe you are even out of the, uh, out of the continent of Africa, 
I want you to know that wherever you are, look for a Bible-believing church. Let them know what you have done, the prayer you have prayed, the prayer of faith we have prayed together, and they will guide you, and you become a mature adult in the things of God. God bless you and prosper you. For the rest of us, I hope you will not say no to God this morning with your offering. You know, I keep on saying to myself, every opportunity to give is just opportunity for me to be blessed. Many have said no to the gospel, but the gospel have not stopped growing in, 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 in might all over the world, spreading. But what a joy if you are part and parcel. If your seed this hour is part and parcel of what God will use to advance the kingdom, even on this platform. I want you to take your offering and I pray for you. Cast that offering, you are using pay bill, you are doing bank transfer, wherever you are, cast your offering this hour. The pay bill for those who are using the pay bill system is 9568970 and the bank is there as well. The code, the branch, and the dollar accounts. Wherever you are, please reach out unto us and do the transfer just now. That money in your hand, that little thing you call little, it can bring you to abundance with God. Because God will never partner with a man and rob him of his dividends. He doesn't do that. He multiplied the seed so. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to bring the word of life to your people. We thank you, Lord, for many things that have said no to us yesterday. They created our joy and our laughter today. Father, Lord, as they go this hour, for those who are working in other nations, and those who are in Kenya today, who probably rest in at home, cause everyone to have an understanding and stop living a bitter, a life of bitterness. Because we all know we cannot be bitter and be better. It is joy that brings a refreshing. Thank you, faithful Father, for everyone casting their seed, multiply it, and reward them abundantly. Amen. The Lord bless you, the Lord prosper you. Don't forget to join me tomorrow. Uh, 5.45 p.m. East African time for our Passover service. It's going to be an amazing time in the presence of God. I welcome you once again to your month of answer prayer. This is your bat ride. John chapter 15 verse 16. This is the bat ride of the same. It is your kingdom identity that you call on the Father and the Father reciprocate with an answer. Be blessed and have a fruitful time.